Hello and thanks for joining me for some landscape photography and today I'm at the very northern tip of the Glidderai range of mountains in Snowdonia. Now my target for today is this peak behind me, Carne de Viliast, 821 metres. Now it's a lovely still quiet day, bright sun forecast all day long and it's Easter weekend so I'm not entirely sure there's going to be a huge amount of landscape photography but I'll explain more about that a bit later on. Um, the reason I've chosen this particular peak, well there are two. Firstly it's the first one I come to when I come off the island onto the mainland it's my nearest decent height peak except for across the valley Alidia Vaur which will be packed today because it's Easter weekend. So um, I've decided that I'm going to go for a hike anyway whether or not the conditions are suitable for landscape photography. Uh, so I'm going to head off up there, it's only about 6.30 in the morning so I should be up and down pretty much before the worst of the crowds anyway. If you follow my channel for any length of time you'll know that I often bang on about keeping my camera handy so I can grab it for a handheld shot when I spot something. The story this morning is that against my better nature I've actually stopped and got myself set up as you can see and I'm really not far off the summit now but I happen to turn around and look over my shoulder and again another lesson about landscape photography is keep your wits about you. Be constantly looking around because you never know what you might see. And what I spotted was that there's a nice big half moon just about to set behind the peak of Elidia Vaur. Now I've still got some nice early morning light just creating some little highlights on the peak itself which without the moon would be pretty boring. But when I spotted that the moon is just about bright enough for me to hopefully be able to pick a bit of detail out of it, I thought it was worth a photograph. So I needed to set my tripod up because I'm shooting at between 100 and 150 millimeters. What I've done is I've taken a range of focal lengths between those two extremes so that when I get home I can have a look and see what's going to give me the best composition uh, and, and which is going to be close enough for me to have to do the least amount of cropping because I don't want to lose any detail either in the mountain peak or in the moon. Got some filters on. I'm using my polarizing filter because I wanted to really darken down the, the blue of the sky so I can create the contrast because obviously in this light the moon is quite faint. Uh, and I've also put my 0.9 soft grad on so that allows me to raise up uh, the histogram across to the right. That'll give me detail in the deep shadows of the mountain peak uh, but also darken the top half down with the sky so that I again so that I'm uh, emphasizing the contrast in the top half of the image. Yeah I think I might be able to make something of this one. I've got my tripod out and got myself all set up despite 
not being too far away from my first coffee break um, because I knew that I was going to be shooting with a long focal length. I knew that there isn't a lot of light so uh, I was likely to have not the fastest of shutter speeds uh, so and also I wanted to be able to use my timer. So I'm only shooting at a hundredth of a second with the three second timer on because even the slightest bit of camera shake in this will completely destroy the image because uh, whilst you can kind to get away with a bit of camera shake when you're shooting mountain peaks because uh, who knows whether they're that sharply in focus or not at this distance obviously the features on the face of the moon would be completely wiped out and I still don't know if I'll be able to pull out anything from that because it's it is very very faint at the moment but uh, looking at it on the camera I'm reasonably hopeful anyway as I said normally the camera would just come off my shoulder strap I take an image and crack on so it is really unusual for me to stop and set up but this is a landscape photography channel so if I didn't stop when I can to talk you through an image you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't be very keen on tuning in again Well now that was a, a really pleasant little stroll just a couple of hours up from where I'm parked and my first order of business is a, a really nice cup of coffee. Every time I use one of these coffee bags, it reminds me of Darren Knight's first time out in the mountains when he recommended these things. Absolutely brilliant. It tastes like almost real Americano coffee, none of that nasty instant rubbish. Can you hear that? Absolutely nothing. I can't hear a thing, not even the odd sheep. Fantastic. It's so quiet up here. I've seen one or two people that have breezed on through down the ridge and said a cheery good morning. That's it. I'm looking across at Trevan and the Glidders here. I can see Snowden Summit and across at Penarolwen and Carnes David and Llewellyn. They will all be really busy today and I've got this place all to myself. And of course the advantage is that had the conditions been slightly more advantageous for landscape photography then I'm in the perfect position to get shots of all of these famous peaks around the northern end of the park. Uh, additionally from my perspective this is the closest decent sized peak to where I live so it really is very much a case of pop across and start climbing. Uh, it's not quite a 3000 of course, 821 meters is only 2,700 feet. Um, my nearest 3,000 is just across the way at uh, Ele Diavour, uh, just a, a shade over 3,000, but that will be busy today, so this is just perfect. Now I will take some pictures from up here before I head off back down, but one of the things that I've been thinking about as far as my channel is concerned is that during last year, between the lockdowns, 
I didn't go out as often as I might have because I was always thinking about are the conditions suitable for photography and you know was it worth my while taking my cameras out and taking you along with me uh, to some of these locations that for a hike are absolutely fabulous just like today I mean really it doesn't get any better than this for an Easter Sunday but I would sort of not bother with it because I knew that the photography wouldn't really be up to much. And what I thought to myself was, well, I'm sort of uh, shortchanging myself by not going out and about. And some of you might just like to come along for a hike, whatever the conditions uh, and, and wherever I, I would like to go hiking, because some of the places I want to hike aren't suitable for landscape photography, particularly. Uh, so I thought, no, actually, I'm going to get out and about more, take you out and about with me more, but there may be less photography. Some of the videos, there may not even be any photography at all. It might just be a hike and it might be in all sorts of conditions that are not suitable, as I say, and locations that are not really suitable. Now, of course, when the opportunity arises to take advantage of light and conditions and locations uh, and really go for those fabulous shots that I try to get, um, then of course I will, <laughs> make no bones about it. It will still be a landscape photography channel if I can possibly uh, do that. But there will be times when I simply grab my bag and go for a hike and I'll take you with me, but sometimes it might just be a hike. So I hope that'll be okay. Uh, I hope not too many of you will be hitting the unsubscribe button as we speak. Anyway, I think uh, finish my coffee, have a snack and then see if there's one or two images to be had. I've come a little way southeast along the ridge heading down towards the Glidders uh, and I'm on a rocky spur that sticks out right over Nant Francon and I'm looking straight down into it. This little spur sits about halfway between the peak of Carna de Villiast where I was earlier uh, and the next peak along uh, Manith Pervez. Uh, not quite as high as Carna de Villiast and it's all a bit sort of flat moorland in that neck of the woods. But the reason I've come along here is to get this view down into the Ogwin Valley. I'm looking straight down at the end of uh, Llyn Ogwin. I can also glimpse the, the outflow of uh, Llyn Idwal as well. Uh, I wanted to see how the light was looking down in Cwm Idwal and also to have a look at these ridges and the layers between me and Cwm Idwal. The thing about Cwm Idwal is that because it's a north facing quarry, it doesn't get a lot of light down into it. So there's still lots of, of shady areas in the cliff walls that I'm hoping I can take advantage of. I'm not really close enough. It's still quite a lot of bluish haze between me and the cum itself, but the ridges in front of that, I might be able to make some use of. So I'm gonna take a few shots here uh, and see what I can get. Now look, I won't lie to you, despite being extremely dubious about the potential for any decent images today, I really have had a very good time out because conditions like this just make it such a pleasure to be up in these hills. And whether or not 
this is put to any good use on a day like this. I'm sorry, but I really don't care. So anyway, if there is anything to show you, I'll put it up. But for now, let me just say thank you so much for coming along with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers.